Now for a while, I've been looking for that perfect device for every home lab environment. I love running virtualization technology. I love running VMware on devices to then go and build a whole bunch of VMs of various types and forms for the purposes of learning. But then sometimes it's hard to find, well, what PC is gonna be adequate enough to be able to actually run that thing and that thing well. And the other thing is because it's a home lab, I also want it to be small. I mean, yes, I could go and buy myself a nice big rack server, something that you'd see in a business, but it's a little bit overkill. It's big, it's bulky, it's noisy. It's a whole bunch of fans in it. And then sometimes you can get yourself a little computer and you may be able to install VMware onto it, but then it's not grunty enough, doesn't have enough power. So what do I do? Well, I stumbled upon this amazing device, which is actually right here. And this thing is one of those devices to rule them all. It is compact, it's small, a nice big heatsink on the top, which means it's fanless, it's low power, and it's grunty. Let's talk first about the short-lived Microsoft Kin. Released in 2010, it was gone in 2011. And this was Microsoft's gamble to young users to give them a mobile phone that was really catered around social media. The hardware wasn't good, had a lack of carrier support, there was poor marketing, it failed on so many fronts, so much so that you probably have never even heard of it. Now you may have stumbled upon one of these before, something similar, but this is Protectly's VP2410 mini computer. I would actually say it's running like a server, it is so grunty, and it's got four ethernet points on the back. This thing is incredible. The CPU is an Intel Celeron J4125, boosting an incredible quad core, bursting up to 2.7 gigahertz, which is amazing. My module here came with 16 gig of RAM. It came with an M2 SSD SATA drive, which was a 480 gig. And I also got a additional one terabyte SSD installed. And because I'm gonna be using this for VMware, I can build a whole pool of VMs right on here. Hey, and also I know that you love this channel because a lot of you tell me that you like this channel, but then also a lot of you are not subscribed. So please do click on that button, subscribe, click on the bell. We wanna hack that system so that you ensure that you do get my content and you don't miss out on anything. So click on the button and on the bell. Now the one thing that I also love about this one is I picked the one that came with TPM, which is the trusted platform module. And what this really does, it's almost like a little handler for security. And you store all of your keys, you store all of your security directly on that physical chip. Now there is also software based TPM. There's also TPM that goes onto other parts of the motherboard, but having a dedicated chip for that thing protects your computer, protects your security from unauthorized access. It comes with built-in Wi-Fi. And look at that, four one gigabit ethernet points. I mean, that is brilliant. I mean, I love that this is a all-in-one device. This thing has everything that I need. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install VMware onto it. Now, VMware, of course, being a virtualization platform, there are others out there. You've got your Citrix, you've got your Microsoft Hyper-V, you've got Proxmox, but I like VMware. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and get VMware's ESXi. All you do is you go to the VMware website, you need to go and register yourself for a VMware account. You can download ESXi completely completely for free. We're gonna be using version eight, which is the latest one as of this video. You can get the key completely for free off the VMware website. Once I've got that ISO, I need to make a bootable USB stick. I love a tool, there's lots of tools out there, but I love a tool called Rufus. You can download it completely for free, R-U-F-U-S. Go and download it, find yourself a USB stick that you're not using, you're gonna go and make that bootable. And once the USB stick is ready, I go and plug it to the front of the Protectly computer. Power it on. Now, one thing that you wanna make sure is that you do actually have the virtualization technology enabled on the BIOS. Then if all things work, you should be able to boot using the boot menu, select your USB stick, and then you boot into the ESXi installation. Just follow the Prompts, you're gonna select the hard drive that you wanna go and install this onto, which in my case is going to be my M2, my little SSD that is right in there. Erasing its content, I set my root admin credentials right here. Admin credentials that you will use to fully administer your ESXi. Coffee time. Good coffee. After your coffee break, it'll then be done. You then boot in, push F2 on your keyboard. First thing is go and set 
a static IP. Set a static IP. I like to also disable IP version six and then I reboot the thing and I'm ready to go. You wanna be building lots of virtual machines. You wanna be building maybe virtual switches. And because you've got four points, you can install one, two, three, or four. Sometimes it's nice to actually have more than one ethernet point for redundancy, for high availability. You then open up a web browser and then you point to the IP that you actually set. Let's show you on the computer. We're just gonna log in with those root credentials that we set up originally. And then once you're logged in, you're presented with the home screen of our ESXi, showing you the model, the make of the computer, and all of the specs of the computers. You can see exactly the CPU, how much RAM you've got. You can see the networking configuration. You can see the IP address right there of 108. And you'll also notice that our ESXi is running in evaluation mode, which means that you're gonna to have to license it after 57 days, it's gonna stop working. You can get a free key completely for free off the VMware website, the place where you go and register, you throw it into here, and then your ESXi is going to be registered. Now, if you're gonna be using this in a production environment, if you want your ESXi host to work with vCenter, then you are gonna to need to go and buy a license. But if it's just for your home lab, if it's just for your evaluation, for your own testing, you can install a free copy, use it forever. And then you'll also see that it is running ESXi version eight. And on the top right, you'll notice that it actually shows me uh, how much resources are being used against the computer. Of course, as you go and build your VMs, that's gonna go up and down depending on how much grunt your VMs actually need. Virtual machines, here we are. We need to go and create our first virtual machine because unless you create a virtual machine, you're not really gonna be able to do very much. Under the storage area, you'll see that my two data stores are listed right there. Now noticing that this is the storage directly on the computer. Now, if you do want to have additional storage, you're gonna to have to add additional disks. If you want to use this in a networking space, if you wanna use this in a home lab, Sometimes you can actually pair this up to a NAS or to a SAN and actually have the storage of the VMs running directly on a separate piece of tech. So in our case, we've got the two ones that are built in, so you can build as many VMs as you want built in right into here. But if you are going to be having more than one ESXi host, if you are gonna be setting them up for, you know, potentially in a vCenter environment, then sometimes it's nice to get the extra benefits of being able to do uh, you know, sharing, vMotioning of VMs. You can actually move VMs from one host to another host without even turning them off. But the best way to do that is for those VMs to be stored on some storage that is accessible across your network because this storage is accessible just from this computer. So if you do need to create another data store, you can go into new data store, you can create a new VMFS data store, which is going to be connected potentially to a SAN, to a nice SCSI, to a fiber channel, or using a NFS data store, which is essentially gonna be connected to a NAS, which is actually gonna create an actual, like a share, which is an NFS share, shared against your ESXi host. Now that is exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to go into here, we're going to select on next, and I'm going to need to provide some information. But first, I'm going to go and log into my NAS. Now I've got a Synology NAS. So we're going to open that up, we're going to create a share or at least allow a share to be shared against this host. Once logged in, I'm going to go into my control panel, there's a section over here around shared folders. And I've got already existing folders right in here. Now you'll see I've already got an ESXi folder. And that's because I've got other hosts, essentially other servers already with some VMs. So I want those VMs to be shared across my network. So I can go into here, select on edit. On the very far right, I've got NFS permissions. And you'll notice that these are all of the hosts that I've already got in my environment that are being shared, or at least I can use the NFS storage against those hosts. So I need to go and add my new host into here. So I'm gonna go and create, and I'm gonna give it its IP address, throw it right in there. We'll leave the rest of the security settings as is and that is now mapped right over there. You notice that my mount path is right over here, so that's what I'm gonna actually go and mount this to. So I'm just gonna go and do a copy of that and select save, and that is now ready to go. Back on my new host, I'm gonna give my data store a relevant name. So I'm gonna actually call it, it's an Aguero NAS. The IP address of my NAS is like so. That's of course my internal IP. And then we're gonna paste that share that we had right over there. That has now been mounted successfully, and there it is. There is my Aguero NAS. And I can go and actually browse this data store. And here is the contents of that data store, which makes it really, really easy. And now I can easily go and create some VMs. I can stick those VMs onto my local data store the disks inside of the unit or directly to my NAS, which I've got right there. And now because a lot of companies are gonna be using Active Directory, let's go and actually build a domain controller. Very, very simply, go and create a new VM right over here 
and next. Now I'm gonna give this particular VM a name. The compatibility is gonna be version eight because that is the version that I'm gonna be running. But if you do have other ESXi hosts in your environment that are running earlier versions of ESXi, go and select an earlier one. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to move that VM between earlier versions of ESXi with too much ease. Select the guest OS, what is the actual OS version? Now the really, the version here doesn't really matter too much because you can go and customize this. This is really more like a template. Uh, it's gonna give you some recommended specs. So I'm gonna go and select the latest one, which is 2019, even though I'm gonna be building a 2022 server. We're gonna select on next. And because my Protect Lee device has a whole bunch of storage built right in the box, and because I'm not gonna be moving my VM to another host, I'm gonna actually go and stick it directly on the storage that is on my Protect Lee itself. Select next, it's automatically assigned a CPU, it's automatically assigned some RAM, so we are good to go right there. What we will do, however, is in our CD area, I'm gonna actually go and point my device to an ISO. And of course, what is an ISO? Well, it's an image file. It's a compressed image file of a full operating system. Now, in my case, I've already gone and downloaded our Windows Server 2022 ISO off the Microsoft website. You can freely use it for half a year, which is really, really nice. So I'm gonna go and select data store ISO. Now I know that all of my ISOs sit on my NAS. So I'm gonna go and point to my NAS, which we recently connected. Remember, this is an NFS NAS, and I'm gonna go ISO right in here. And here are all of the ISOs that I've got loaded inside of that particular data store. There's my server 2022. Click on OK, next, and summary, finish. Can now go and actually power this thing on. We're gonna go and console into it so we can see exactly what is going on. And there we go. We are now booting into our Windows Server 2022 ISO. And the great thing is this is running directly on my Protectly device. It's so cool. It's so cool that I can just use this computer pumped full of stuff. It's completely silent. And now I'm gonna actually run Active Directory right on it. I'm not gonna go through these specifics. This is just installing Windows. You should be an expert at just clicking next, next, next and finish automatically found my 90 gig. Now this is of course pointing to the local storage on my device and there you go. Now go make yourself a coffee and we'll check back once we're ready. Long coffee break, but what I was doing while I was waiting, I actually went and created a couple of other VMs, a Kali Linux VM and a CentOS OS VM, both flavors of Linux. I'm gonna go and power both of these things on, but let's go and have a look at the console and here it is, booting up. Let's go and open up this one. Here's our two additional VMs, good to go. And then at the same time, I can go and console in to my DC, which is now ready to go. Also, let's go and set up a very, very complex password for our domain controller. Well, it's not a domain controller yet. It's still a Windows Server. We'll set up the domain controller shortly. And look at that, while that's loading, here's our Kali Linux. You wanna learn a little bit about password attacks. You wanna do some wireless attacks. You wanna do some reverse engineering. And in our CentOS, and go into our file, Explorer, and there you go. Everything is ready to go right in there. Now that your Windows Server is ready to go, there's a few things that you probably should do before you set it up as a domain controller. One, let's give it a proper IP address. Give it an IP address that never changes. And two, give it a proper name. Don't just leave it as this win dash 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 zero one three six. Give it a proper name. Once that is done, we then go and set up the DC. Under our server manager, we're gonna go and add new roles and features. We're gonna click on next. We're gonna see our DC right over there. And now we're gonna click on this second one here, Active Directory domain services. We're gonna tick on that. We're gonna install all of the services that are needed to actually get your DC up and running. Do you want a Active Directory Azure space? Well, you could do that left separately as it says right there. We're gonna do that later on. And we're gonna say restart just in case this server needs to reboot. Now that I've got the roles done, I now need to go and promote this. I'm gonna go in here and select promote because all I've done is I just installed the roles and the services, but now I actually need to go and make it convert it into a domain controller. We're gonna go and add a brand new forest. Of course, your forest being your top level, and then all of your domains sit within your parent forest. Let's give it a meaningful name. What is the functional level? Well, think about every single VM, every single server that you're gonna have running. Make sure that it's compatible with all of those. We'll leave it at 2016, because we're good with that. Add a password for your directory services restore mode. Make sure this password is long, complex, secure. Make sure you know these locations. It's important stuff right there. Summary of what's going on. We're happy with all of that. And here it begins, doing some prerequisite checks against our new domain controller. And then we click on install. We're good to go. You've done a few reboots. I should now be able to go into our start menu and I've got a few additional little things under our admin section. Active Directory, right there it is. 
Users, computers, there's my new protect lead domain. You now start to go and populate and build your domain. Go and create your computers, your users, connect them to your new domain that you've just set up as this VM running on ESXi, running on this awesome protect lead computer. So if you wanna grab one of these, down below in the link, I've got a link directly to this product. You've got to grab one. I'll tell you, it is brilliant. It is nice. It looks good. It's got no fans. It's low power and it packs a punch. And also check out some of my other videos. We need to ensure that we are on top of that YouTube algorithm. We want you to make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. So click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. Stay tuned as well for my next video. We continue talking about all things tech. We'll see you next time.